big breaking news this hour, which is, of course, the news that John Kelly, the president's chief of staff, is officially out. It's been rumored about for quite some time. Now it's final. So here to weigh in is our political panel, Eric Beach. He is the co-chair of Great America PAC and a former Ohio State Senator, now with American University, and a contributor for the Washington Examiner, Capri Cafaro. So, uh, Capri, I'll start with you. Sure. What do you make of the news? John Kelly's out. Well, you know, I think that it's not necessarily a surprise. We've been hearing for a number of weeks now that um, there's been tensions within the White House. I do think that there, there will end up being a different tenor and tone as well uh, in the absence of, uh, you know, former General Kelly, because, you know, when he came in and took over from Reince Priebus, you know, we heard a lot about uh, how he was trying to make things more regimented, how he was trying to control the flow of information uh, to President Trump uh, and the folks inside the White House. And so I think it looks as if, um, from what we're hearing, that the, the top pick might be um, uh, Vice President Pence's chief of staff, um, which would be a much more political pick going into 2020. Eric, what do you think? What do you make of this breaking news? Yeah. First of all, I think there's two things here. You know, John Kelly's a patriot, and he did bring organization to this White House. And there's been a cloud over this White House, especially from the special counsel's investigation, that there was really a lot to try to get through there. Uh, and in these next two years, there may have to be some changes. And the one thing where the president and John Kelly disagreed was on illegal immigration. That's the number one issue, and, and to many conservatives and Republicans and Trump supporters, the number one crisis facing us here today. And, you know, I think with Nick or whoever does come in, they're going to really reach shake that agenda and bring it back into what he ran on and try to mm -hmm. deliver those campaign promises here in the next two years. Well, and Nick Ayers, as you said, the vice president's chief of staff, uh, a political guy. But I mean, heading into 2020, perhaps it's not such a bad thing to have a political guy mm -hmm. uh, running the West Wing. Capri? Uh, you know, I think that's probably part of President Trump's calculus, if that's who he really chooses. Um, you know, unfortunately, governing has become so political, and, and that's not necessarily new. Um, but, I, you know, I think that because President Trump is such uh, a unique uh, was a unique candidate, is a unique president in his governing style um, that, uh, you know, I think that having somebody who has a political background in, in the White House might be, um, you know, what he's looking for. But don't forget, again, uh, Reince Priebus was the actual head of the RNC um, and was the chief of staff. And we didn't necessarily see that kind of, you know, political machine coming out of the White House. So I think it's a little too early to tell. Um, and I personally believe that the more any governing body, uh, Democrat Democrats and Republicans, the more you focus on doing your job, politics takes care of itself. Eric, you're close to the folks in the Trump administration. Are you hearing any other names being talked about for this job other than Nick Ayers? No, I mean, look, I, I think uh, that if Nick comes on board, you know, what he shares is the same vision that the president ran on as a candidate. And I think no matter who the chief of staff is, they need to follow those instincts that the president uh, runs on and campaigns on and really tries to deliver to make into policy. And we didn't see that. Even with Reince Priebus, we didn't see that. You know, there was a lot of contradictions when it came to, you know, the Senate leadership or even the House leadership. Mm -hmm. So a chief of staff needs to execute the Trump. President Trump has great political instincts because he understands where middle America is and how to talk to middle America. Mm -hmm. So I, I think whoever we see here at chief of staff, it's okay to be political, but they need to understand the Trump vision. Mm -hmm. So let's talk just a little bit about John Kelly. Uh, how, how do you think he's going to be remembered as a chief of staff? What will his legacy be, Capri? Um, I, you know, I think that it, it depends on who you ask. I think that, uh, you know, anybody that's involved with the Trump administration is somehow now going to be defined by the fact that they are um, affiliated with the Trump administration. So, yes, he'd given, you know, decades of service in the military and was, you know, the, um, the head of the Southern Command, for example, um, obviously was a very accomplished general. Um, that's always going to be part of his legacy. But the fact that he took on uh, being President Trump's chief of staff, I think, will um, will live with him. And I think, that, again, depending on who you talk to, I think that there will be some that say, yes, he's brought order, um, you know, to uh, a White House that, you know, is full of newbies. Uh, but I think that there are others that will say, well, you know, he didn't do enough um, to you know, keep the White House focused on track and moderate their vision. But I do agree with my colleague talking about the fact that people are looking, the President Trump is looking for someone to execute his vision. And we're seeing that time and time again with his choices with uh, the U.N. Um, uh, ambassador, for example, Heather Nowrit and, and Mike Pompeo. And we're seeing this throughout his choices now um, in, in his cabinet, too. 
and we are watching Air Force One uh, about to take off on its way to the Army-Navy game where President Trump uh, is going to be watching and announcing uh, another staff shakeup, his new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, but back to John Kelly. Eric, uh, what do you make of his time as Chief of Staff? What do you think his legacy will be? And, and was, he, was he a good Chief of Staff? He's nothing short of a patriot, and he was a great chief of staff. He came in to a situation that was in disarray, and we have to call that what it is. And, you know, it wasn't left to him in a good place, and he brought a lot of order into the White House. And, again, he never undercut, you know, the president, at least publicly. You know, he, he never you know, tried to go against that agenda, and there was a lot of parts of that agenda that he actually disagreed with philosophically. So I think, you know, class and character defines General Kelly, and I think he'll be remembered as such. So how does the West Wing operate in his absence? Capri, what do you think are some of the, uh, the changes that we will see in the days to come as Kelly makes his way out? Well, I, I think that, you know, in the absence of a chief of staff, you're obviously going to have, um, you know, one less person in that chain of command. And so I think that we, what we may see is um, a more unbridled President Trump, um, someone uh, with a situation where, you know, he doesn't have um, a barrier, a filter. Um, and so he's going to be probably dealing more directly with um, individuals in the West Wing, maybe even um, leadership in the House and the Senate. Um, and so I think we'll probably see, at least in the short term, um, you know, more of Trump being Trump. Um, and um, I think we're going to have to just wait and see uh, who comes and fills that position and how they then decide to organize the West Wing if they empower President Trump, which I think is more likely, or if they try to, um, you know, hamstring him and, you know, try to take away his phone <laughs> and, and this sort of thing, uh, which I sincerely doubt. Absolutely. And yeah, of course. I mean, Chief of Staff John Kelly, he was able to provide uh, quite a bit more order than perhaps his predecessor, Reince Priebus, was able to. Uh, but still, nobody's going to be able to control uh, President Trump's tweeting and his use of his cell phone to do that. Uh, it's the way that he communicates with his supporters. And for him, it's proven to be very effective. Uh, Eric, what do you make of uh, how this might change uh, some other, or lead to some other potential staff shakeups within the West Wing. If Kelly's out, does he take anybody with him? Well, possibly. I, I think the staff needs to get on board once again. Trump ran against 17 candidates in the primary. He defeated Hillary Clinton because he had a certain vision on illegal immigration, on trade deals, uh, really on foreign policy. So, you know, I want Trump to be Trump because he was smarter than the rest of the field and he understood what Americans really wanted in that America first agenda. So I think the staff, it's not incumbent upon the president to change his views and his ways. It's incumbent to the staff to say, if you want to work at the White House, we're going to execute the vision that he ran and won on. Remember, he was elected. He, he was elected, and, you know, now we're heading into 2020, and uh, it's really just around the corner. And uh, you look at somebody like Nick Ayers, who is uh, well known, who's obviously being talked about as a potential replacement for John Kelly. You look at somebody like him who could uh, very easily bring a lot of uh, political instincts, uh, things that President Trump would really like to this West Wing uh, could be could be valuable to have him in the White House at a time like this. But he also has uh, a lot of support from folks like Jared and Ivanka, but also yep. uh, some detractors within the West Wing. Uh, final final question, Capri. Sure. When do you think that we will know who John Kelly's replacement will be? Um, well, it looks like he's going to be leaving at the end of the year, uh, according to President Trump. So I think that we'll probably hear, um, you know, the potential replacement in the next uh, few weeks. So I think probably right either between Christmas and New Year's, maybe. Yeah, and President Trump himself said that we could expect at least some kind of appointment, perhaps an interim appointment, within the next two or three days. So uh, Capri, Eric, thanks for coming on and breaking down this breaking news for us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.